It's dropping frames like crazy. It cannot, <laughs> it just crashed. It's time for a speed test between the top three video editing applications for the Mac. We've got Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve, and we are gonna see which one is fastest at everything. They are running on an M1 Max MacBook Pro, so this is basically top of the line, 64 gigs of RAM. It's running on an external drive, but we have the exact same footage loaded into all three applications. And let's start with something crazy first. This was gonna be the first test, is I've got this 4K timeline with a whole bunch of HEVC, uh, H.264, and ProRes footage in here. And I just wanna see like, what's it like to play back? Like, can it play back smooth in all of them? You know, here I am in Final Cut Pro. I've got better quality turned on. I can scrub through it perfectly smooth. So that's not really an interesting test. What I realized though, is I can actually go into all of them and I can start looping the playback. And all three applications, Final Cut, Premiere, and DaVinci can all play back perfectly smooth at the exact same time. None of them are stuttering at all. Is Premiere on full quality? Yeah, it is. is Resolve. And yeah, Resolve is to, so these are all playing back at full quality. So just look at what's going on here. There is so much happening. And usually this slows down on most machines. So I don't know, it, it, whether or not there's a winner of the software, there's definitely a winner of the hardware and that's these new MacBooks. But you will notice a bunch of the footage, all of this good stuff happening over here. This is from Storyblocks, the sponsor of this video. If you're a creator and you haven't checked out Storyblocks before, today is the day. The link is in the description. They have unlimited downloads of over a million assets for your next project. And the nice thing about this is it means you can create more content because it's quicker and easier because sometimes you just don't have time to shoot clips yourself. I mean, I do it all the time, just to like fill in a little drone shot here or a cityscape or a family laughing or a whale or a wacky waving inflatable arm tube man. Whatever you need, they're gonna have it. And they have subscriptions that fit any budget so you can choose one that works just for you. And the royalty-free library is always growing with demand. They've got not just this great 4K footage, but also After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, music, images, sound effects, and more to give you everything you need to bring your stories to life. And Storyblocks is changing the face of stock footage with more diverse and inclusive content. Their restock initiative is a commitment to increase the representation in stock by hiring creators from marginalized communities. Or if you have a large creative team, they have enterprise licensing. They really have it all. So head over to Storyblocks, see what they've got for you. The link is in the description. And thanks again, Storyblocks. And before I quit these apps, let's do one more thing to show off this MacBook. All of these are playing back right now. The fans still haven't kicked on. No fans. The only time I've had the fans turn on is when I'm transcoding a bunch of footage and that's it. All right, now let's go back to these apps and do them one at a time. I've quit everything except for Final Cut Pro, which is my editor of choice. And yeah, so you know what's going on in this timeline. It's a mixed set of 4K footage. Some of it's from the C70 and the Canon R5 and DJI drone and like I said, story blocks. So there's a lot of different stuff in here. All the Canon footage is using my log conversion LUTs and then all of, all of the footage has a adjustment layer over top of it that is using my film emulation LUT and the link to all of that is in the description below if you wanna download them. But like I said, this plays back smoothly, even on quality mode, so let's try to slow this down. I've got this timeline of 8K ProRes footage and it also plays back smoothly. This is the footage I was showing in my initial review of the M1 Max. It's playing back great, so I couldn't slow it down. So. I added a few more layers. Let's see what happens. Now we've got six layers of 8K ProRes all playing back at the same time. I already knew that Final Cut could handle this because it's optimized for the Mac. It's gonna perform the best, I would expect. Let's see how the others do. And while we're at it, this is a great chance for another test. Let's see how long each of them take to launch. All right, so here we go with Premiere Pro. Just over six seconds. DaVinci Resolve, five and a half seconds. Final Cut Pro. <laughs> Three and a half seconds. Okay, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Let's get back to Premiere Pro. It's playing back the 8K ProRes footage perfectly smoothly, no problems there. Let's add some layers. And now we have six layers of 8K stacked on top of each other, playing back at full resolution. Can it do it? It's doing it. Oh, oh, no, it's dropping frames. It's dropping frames like crazy. It cannot. And it just crashed. This computer has 64 gigs of RAM in it. Premiere can't handle this at all. All right, let's give it a fighting chance. Let's turn it down to half resolution. Okay, now playing back half resolution, these 8K files at 4K are playing just fine. That's the most you would ever do anyway. So this is, this is a real stress test. So Premiere is still doing all right. 
but Final Cut beat it in this round. All right, now let's try this in Resolve. This is a 4K timeline because I'm not running the studio version Resolve here. And right away, okay, this is, this is not playing back smoothly. But what's kind of funny, I only get a slow playback warning for a moment. Resolve thinks it's playing this back at 23.976 frames per second, which is what the footage is captured at. So Resolve thinks it's playing back smoothly, but I, I can see it and it's not. All right, let's give Resolve a chance. Turn down its playback resolution to half. Uh-oh, it's still not smooth. All right, it's not enough. So Resolve is behind Premiere. Let's see, can it do this at one quarter of the resolution? It's still not smooth. That's, that's too bad. So, you know, Resolve is trying to do this resolution independence thing so that it's playing this back smaller on the fly, but it can't handle it. So trophy goes to Final Cut on this one. And at this point, all three apps have updated for M1, so we should be expecting good performance. They're not running in emulation mode here. All right, now I've got another way to break playback in all of these. We've got some R5 raw light footage, which is really heavy for a computer to decompress. ProRes is really easy because it's sort of already decompressed, but this raw footage slows anything down. So in Final Cut Pro, it cannot play it back smoothly. And this is currently in better quality. So let's try switching it to better performance, see if we can handle it. And it's an instant fix. We've got smooth playback, that's great. And for any practical application, that is fine. This is 8K footage. It's, it's not supposed to play back smoothly. All right, and let's take a look at Premiere. It is, it is worse. I mean, Final Cut wasn't smooth, but <laughs> this is playing like two or three frames per clip. All right, that's pretty bad. Let's see how it does it half. All right, half is choppy, but playing. Yeah, it's like it's dropping frames. It's not smooth, but you could you could work with it. Now let's try one quarter playback. This this must be smooth. Let's see. All right, one quarter is good. All right, now resolve. It is at full resolution. Let's see how playback is. Oh oh, looks looks smooth. Wait, is this the right? Yeah, these are the raw files. It's totally smooth. That's great. There's no better feeling for a YouTuber when you surprise yourself making a video. But if you've watched any of my videos before, it's a good time to subscribe. I know it's easy to forget to hit the button, but it's right down there below the like button. And then you're gonna get a lot more of this. And now it's time to move on to exports. And just before I do, I wanna say one thing that doesn't get included in most of these speed tests is the actual speed of editing within them. And I find Final Cut to be by far the fastest. That doesn't mean it's the best. There's things you can't do, especially Resolve has amazing grading tools, but Final Cut is really quick and efficient. If you wanna know some of the tips of how I edit really quickly, I've got a video linked in the description and there's a link up here. And it's got all my tips and tricks to edit really fast in Final Cut Pro. Now let's see how the exports do. All right, we're back to our standard timeline. This has all of the mixed 4K footage. This kind of represents a normal project. It's playing back well. Okay, so how should we export this? Let's go to share, export file. And for each of them, I'm gonna kind of follow the defaults that the application wants me to. So H.264. Oh, and background rendering has been turned off this whole time for Final Cut, so it's not getting a head start. All right, and here we go. Another crazy thing here is we've got the CPU monitor up and it's not using a lot of cores. I think a lot of this is being offloaded to the dedicated ProRes and HEVC and H.264 encoder decoders that are on the M1 Max and the M1 Pro chip. So it can just do all this barely accessing the CPU. So I think that is a good argument to go for the Max instead of the Pro if you're a video editor, just so you get those other encoders and decoders. 49 seconds for Final Cut Pro, and this is on like a almost three minute timeline, better than real time, three times better than real time. This computer is amazing. Okay, let's try another. Whoa, look at that CPU kick in. Really fast though. Whatever it's doing, it's working. Oh, CPU's cooled down now. Oh, this is gonna be close. Wow, 56 seconds. That's pretty good. I mean, I remember a day not that long ago where Premiere would be two or three times as long to export. So good job, Premiere, I'm impressed. One, two, three, go. And look at this thing fly. This machine, it's rendering at 84 frames per second. One thing I love about Resolve is all of its export options. I really wish Final Cut would adopt those, things like being able to export individual t clips from the timeline. There's all this stuff it can do that I don't have in Final Cut. My time says 44 seconds, theirs says 43 seconds. Resolve just won the export race. What was the time for Final Cut? 49 seconds? 
So Resolve was just our fastest export. That, I haven't seen that before. That's great. I just want to remind anybody that like, there's no sense in picking teams and favorites. I really like all of this software and I'm not quick to switch. I'm gonna keep using Final Cut Pro because once you learn something, it takes a while to switch over. But if you want to have a really clear idea about other advantages of each piece of software, I've got a video entirely dedicated to Final Cut Pro versus Premiere. Resolve isn't in that one, but I should be doing a sequel soon. If I can get 10,000 likes on this video, that will come out. Comparing all three in detail. I'll see you guys in the next video.